I would give you guys a few guesses as to where this is, but you probably don't need that many. It's uh, one of my favorite hotels in one of my favorite cities in the world with one of my favorite people in the world, actually. Specifically, we're here at the Aria Hotel and Casino. Actually, one of my uh, preferred properties on the strip, but for some reason or another, it seems that poker players don't agree because even though their poker room is pretty sweet, it never has quite as many games as the Bellagio, for example. The plan for right now is to jump into a 2-5 no limit, which is a $1,000 max, and then just hang out until the open of 510. She's gonna hang out and watch me play cards, and hopefully it's not a complete disaster because, you know, it's never fun to lose a bunch in front of your girlfriend. Next week or, yeah, I think next week, here's the dates. I have a meetup game with Rampage Poker at the Hustler Casino in LA. So if you guys want to come out, you're more than welcome. It's going to be a fun time. The first day is going to be a 2-3 no limit. The second day, a 5-5. A five, five. little bit of a bigger game for those of you degenerates out there. And uh, actually, the two days prior to that, I'm going to be on their live stream with Ethan playing some 1020. So if you guys want to tune into the Hustler Casino Live, you can watch us play. And yeah, like I said, it's going to be a great time. Hopefully I get to meet a few of you guys there. But anyway, that's it for now. It's time to head inside and play some cards. Let's go. All right, like I said, we're starting off with some 2-5 until the 5-10 game starts. In for $1,000. Didn't stay here long, but I did find a couple of interesting spots. The first of which, we look down at Ace-King in the small blind. There's an early position open to $15 and the button calls. I will be doing no such thing, so I make it 75 to go. Early position raiser now puts in another raise. This one totaling around $200 or so. Button gets out of the way and now it's back to me. Upon closer inspection, it appears this player started the hand with around four or $500. So not much decision to be had here for under 100 big blinds. I'm always fine getting all in with ace king. So that's what I do. Surprisingly, our opponent does not snap call but after some deliberation, does indeed make the call. I show him what he's up against, and he turns over pocket jacks. So we're starting off the session with a flip, and it's a good one. King high flop, plus no disaster on the turn and river. Decent start. The very next shuffle, there's a $10 straddle on, and action folds to me on the button with jack nine of spades. I open a $30 and get called by the big blind and the straddler. Three ways to another great flop, Nine high with two spades. They both check it over to me. I place another bet, this time $60. Only the big blind makes the call. Turn card isn't the best. It's the six of clubs. Big blind checks again, and now I think we have a pretty clear check back in position. So we're off to a river, which also sucks. The seven of diamonds. He checks for a third time, and as much as I like to go for thin value sometimes, this spot in particular just feels a little too optimistic, so I check it back, and he shows king-queen off. At this point, the 510 opens, which is a $3,000 max, so I get some more chips and proceed to fold rags for about an hour before finally looking down at pocket tens. There's a limper in early position before it gets to me in the small blind. I kick it up to 50, big blind gets lost, but the early position player calls. Heads up to queen five deuce with a flush draw. I bet small here, looking to protect against overcards and perhaps extract some value from flush draws and smaller pairs. My opponent makes the call. Turn card is the nine of diamonds. Now I think we have a pretty clear check since our hand is decent, but not really good enough to bet multiple times. This time he bets $80 and seeing as we're still beating flush draws, any nine and of course all other possible bluffs, I make the call. Off to a river which doesn't look too exciting, the three of spades. 
Nothing to do but check again. This time he fires for $130. And even though we're getting a good price, I just don't think he's betting a worse hand than pocket tens anymore. So I just fold and he shows a set of twos. Turns out what looked like a bad river card probably ended up saving me some money. Tens didn't work out for me, so I decided to upgrade to pocket aces. Luckily in this hand, the $20 straddle is on, and there's a $60 open from early position, plus a caller behind him before it gets to me in the big blind, so pretty much the perfect storm. I make it 320 to go, and only the early position razor makes the call. We each started the hand with around 3000 so plenty of money left behind as we go to a flop of king seven deuce with a couple of spades. This is a spot where I would bet pretty much all my holdings for a small size. Of course, aces are no exception, so I continue with a bet of $200. Much to my surprise, my opponent now raises to 820 This raise makes little sense to me, honestly, since I would imagine all his strong hands and his draws just want to call in position. But whatever, I've got aces, so I'm not complaining. I make the call hoping to get a clean turn card that doesn't kill any action. And that's exactly what we get on the five of hearts. I check it over to him, hoping he continues firing. And fire he does, this time for all my remaining chips, totaling around $2,000. Obviously a very straightforward call from us. River card comes the five of clubs, which looks good to me. Turns out, though, it doesn't make any difference as my opponent shows pocket sevens. <sighs> Pretty nasty beat, not gonna lie. But nothing really to be done about it. Just gonna happen from time to time, I guess. Good thing is that long term, it'll go both ways. Going the wrong way this time, though. So I rebuy for another 3,000 and try to forget about it. In the next hand, action folds to me on the button looking down at King Jack. Straddle is on, so I open to $50. Then the small blind raises to $200, and action folds back to me. With King Jack offsuit on the button, facing a small blind raise, our hand actually functions best as a re-raise. And the reason why is it's just not strong enough to flat call, but it does have some removal to strong hands like Kings, Jacks, Ace, King, etc. Plus, we want to mix in some hands like these so that when we raise in these spots, it's not always just aces and kings, right? So that's what I go for here. I make it 520, and after some deliberation, the small blind calls. Flop comes down king, queen, three with two hearts. He checks it over to me. I put in a continuation bet of $250, and he makes the call. Pretty satisfied with the developments so far until we see an ace of hearts on the turn. Small blind checks again, this time I check it back. One of the main hands I'm expecting him to have here is ace queen, which obviously beats us now. River card is the seven of diamonds. Once again he checks, I check it back, and we lose to ace queen. Kind of a frustrating hand since I would expect to win this pot very often in position but it's not so easy when your opponent makes two pairs. Moving along, in the next one, the straddle is on once again. I open king 10 of hearts in early position to 50, and then someone in middle position makes it 160. This time I decide just to flat call, and we go to an action looking flop of ace 8 7 with two hearts. I check it, and my opponent checks it back. Looking for a red card on the turn, which we do get, but it's the wrong shape. Diamond instead of a heart. In this case, I think the play is mostly to bet huge and occasionally go for a check raise. This time I had the feeling he was going for a delayed C bet, so I do decide to check and indeed he does bet $210. Now we've got a very clear raise on our hands. This will put a lot of holdings in a miserable spot like ace king, ace queen, ace jack, maybe even some big pocket pairs that he could be betting here. So I make it $730. Not necessarily expecting a fold right away, but pretty confident that we can get away with some evil intentions on the river. I mean, I could certainly have a lot of strong hands here, right? My opponent thinks it over for a while and eventually does decide to call, so a sizable pot brewing here with one more card to come. And if I could pick the biggest brick in the deck, the three of spades would for sure be a candidate. At this point, pretty much all my possible holdings here are hands that I would want to bet for a large size, whether as a bluff or for value. 
So, I fire for $1,500, putting him to the test. And to be honest with you guys, I'm expecting this to work versus a lot of hands, except pocket aces, of course. Not too much time passes now before my opponent decides on a raise all in. <sighs> okay, I pass my cards to the dealer and he shows pocket aces. Nice hand. In the next extremely fun hand of poker, straddle is on and early position opens to $60. I call in the big blind with ace three of hearts and the straddler folds. Flop comes down pretty damn good, ace eight three rainbow. I check it over and he continues with a small bet. This time I decide just to call since the board is so dry. Turn card is the deuce of spades bringing in a spade draw. Once again I check it. Luckily he continues betting again for $170. Well, time to raise again, but this time I actually have a hand. That's the good news. So I make it $600, hoping that he's not bluffing and actually has something to call with but he snap folds. In the next one, there's an early position open to 30, no straddle, sadly. Action folds to me in the big blind looking down at ace 10, the unsuited variety. I make the call and we see a queen nine three flop, which checks through. Turn is the jack of clubs, which also checks through. The river though is the eight of clubs, suddenly improving us to a straight. At this point, my image at the table is pretty garbage, so I figured if I bet really big and try to make it look like a bluff, my opponent could convince himself to call with a pair or whatever. So I bet 120, double the size of the pot. Now he thinks for a little bit and then announces a raise to $420. Now I suspect this is a bluff about 1% of the time, so I quickly make the fold and later on he told me he had the nut flush. Of course, this could be a lie to make me feel better, but he seemed like a real nice, honest guy. At least, that's what I'm going to tell myself. In the last hand of the night, yours truly is in the $20 straddle. There's an open from early position to $60. Player behind him calls, and I defend with ace-9. Three ways here to a flop of queen-jack-7 with two hearts. I check it, pre-flop raiser checks it, and the player behind him checks as well. Turn is the five of spades, and after they both check back on the flop, it seems unlikely that we're up against anything too strong. So even though we don't really have the best hand to do it with, I decide I'm gonna try and steal this pot. So I place a bet of $120. The initial raiser calls, but the player behind him folds. River card is the four of hearts, which all things considered is, I think, a pretty good card. Seems to me like the pre-flop raiser would've bet any flush draw on the flop as well as most strong hands like top pair or better. Based on that assumption, I think his most likely holdings here are hands like King Jack or Jack 10 suited, you know, just middling strength hands that have some showdown value, all of which are not gonna have a good time facing another bet here. So I fire again, this time for $340. Now my opponent goes in the tank for a while before eventually deciding to let it go. Wow, okay, cool, so finally a hand that doesn't go too poorly. At this point in the night, however, it was time to embark on the three hour drive back to California. So I decide to admit defeat and live to fight another day. Once in a while, everything in a session will sort of line up. Oh, fuck. So once in a while, everything in a poker session goes wrong. When you have the best hand, no one calls. When you have the worst hand, the pot is huge. Uh, it seemed like all of those things happened today and it just happened over and over and over. I was in for 10.5K and out for 4,092 for a net total of a bunch. A lot of money. <laughs> but hey, I hope that at the very least you guys enjoyed me showing you the Aria Poker Room. It was definitely worth the $7,000 tour. What were we for? Yeah. The one good thing about tonight is that I'll probably end up flying the drone somewhere cool, which uh, 
you guys will see in like about 30 seconds. But yeah, that's it for tonight. I ended up losing a bunch of money. It's reminiscent of the 1020 session at Bellagio. Luckily, I had some good company with me the whole time. And yeah, that's it. I'll see you guys next week at The Hustler with Ethan. Please make sure to come out if you guys uh, are looking for a good time. And until next time, good luck at the tables. Peace. Yeah.